Hello guys, this is Spicy, and today I'm reviewing the uh, Square Enix Bring Arts Near Replicant Near Gestalt King action figure. So this uh, figure was released in 2018, and the game was, uh, I think the game came out in uh, 2010, I believe, around the same time as Final Fantasy XIII, one of the Final Fantasy XIII's. And yes, uh, let's see, where is the release date on this figure? It says 20, uh, 2010 Square Enix, but pretty sure this figure was released in uh, 2018. So anyway, I guess it's based on the game. So, that's the box retail price for this figure is about... 70 US dollars and uh, it's recommended for ages 15 and up Okay, I think the original game. I don't know the rating on the original game I think it might be rated M for mature But not a hundred percent sure here. We have the figure and uh, we have the stand right here uh, The stand has two parts. I'm only gonna use like the larger one to hold the figure and we have three sets of option hands and uh, interchangeable parts for this giant weird looking creepy disturbing automaton head thing and let's see wow it still says 2010 may in japan so i'm actually quite surprised so this figure is what like eight years old <laughs> anyway let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories so we have the uh, stand right here for the figure very nice uh, this one is less robust than what you would expect from something like, uh, um, let's see, from Figma or uh, Mayfix. I think I did a quick comparison. So take a look at this is the uh, Mayfix stand. And take a look, compare this to a Figma stand. So here we have a Figma stand. So yeah, looks like... Uh, Bring Arts, Square Enix still have uh, some room for improvement if they want to make a better, you know. It, it does feel very robust though, feel a lot sturdier than uh, what you would expect from uh, the Mayfix stand. But I think the Figma stand is still a little bit more solid and more stylish than the uh, Bring Arts stand. Why are we talking about stands here? Let's talk about the figure, right? So anyway, for accessories, we have two closed fists that's attached to this tree. And there's a nub here on this tree, so that definitely screams quality, alright? <laughs> yeah, look at that. That doesn't look very high quality to me. So we have open two open hands, two uh, gripping hands, one grabbing onto the king's swords. Those are king swords, that's what they were called. And two closed fists. And we have the uh, option head here. Very nice. I think the scope work is actually very nice. I mean, it looks like a quality figure. Uh, I guess just the stuff that it comes with isn't very high quality. But yeah, the hair is very nicely sculpted. It's like a softer material. So that's nice. Nothing's gonna break on you. The flower is very nicely painted. We also got these straps right here. Okay, the head is very nice. Let's take a look at King Swords. So this is also very nicely sculpted. It's got some flash right here on the bottom. Uh, the blade is pretty nicely painted. I don't know about this section right there, but overall it's pretty good. And the blade can be separated, so it can go, go into the hand like that. So you just grab one of the... Uh, Let's see, let's move this down a little bit and bring it forward. Uh, you uh, bring one of these over here. Grab the uh, sword. Push the handle in there like so. Plug this in like that. And there we go, it can hold on to the sword very nicely. So that's pretty good. And we got this weird creepy looking disturbing head. I think this is like a head from one of the automatons. So like the newest game in the series, I think Near Automata have a, oh, have some of these guys in it, I think. Not 100% sure. I don't even know if it's like in the it's in the same timeline. 
but yeah anyway there we go uh let's go ahead and put her on the stand actually she can't actually stand very well without the stand but it's better i don't want her constant i don't want her to like fall over because she's uh actually he is wearing heels so there we go All right, so we have this very weird, creepy looking head. And basically what you can do is you can split this thing open. And remove this section right here. And you can just connect this piece right here, like so. Oh, okay, I see what to do. So basically what you want to do is plug this piece in here, like so, and then you want to connect this, so it looks like a head. And this becomes an accessory for Kang. Another accessory. So basically what you want to do is carefully remove one of the hand. You see the uh, peg hole right here, and then you peg the hand into the, peg the head thing into the head. The I feel like this thing is kind of weak, so you kind of want to be careful with it when you want to connect that. Just, you know, don't want to break it or anything like that. Uh, it's it's a bit difficult. We're gonna have to uh, just make sure it lines up properly. Okay, things better. If we go ahead and take this body off the stand right there and then do that maybe connect her actual head on here <laughs> before we do that let's go ahead and rotate the arm up for a little bit and let's go ahead and try to get this in there or at least try to get it in there There we go, that is also quite disturbing. <laughs> um, let me just consult the manual real quick and make sure that's how you do it. Yeah, I think so, because look at this, this is uh, one of the options. So yeah, what was this thing supposed to do, like just scare the crap out of people? <laughs> or whatever it is that they fight in that universe? Okay, anyway, um, I think the reason why she have all these bandages on her body parts is because she's uh, uh, sh she's like partly a shade creature or something. So, yeah. So, she's a shade. And she's half shade. And I guess also like some weird like creature kind of thing. So she bandaged up half of her body, so like the uh, uh, the stuff doesn't come out. <laughs> I think I did actually play the game. Uh, I it was so, so long ago. I kind of forget the story, but anyway, um, I didn't really pay attention to the game. I had no idea that she was in fact a he. But anyway, uh, I guess she's trying to convince people that she's she's really a she then uh, by wearing this. That kind of makes sense. She uh, wearing this outfit to try to uh, deceive people. But anyway, uh, it's gonna probably get too controversial for this channel. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about articulation. So yeah, she's got some decent articulation. We got a hinge here for the feet. Can rotate the feet like that. Again, man, quality issues I guess. And then uh, we have, wow, okay, this is like the Figma style knee, a Figma style joint, but you can get that, but if you move it forward, that actually looks very ugly. Yeah, that that's definitely not, not great, but I do like the shading on the legs. I guess if you don't bend the knee, that, that wouldn't really look too bad, but if you do bend the knee, that's uh, going to look absolutely terrible. And we do have a thigh cut here. That's actually very nice. We have a thigh cut. That's actually just built in there. That's very smart. And then we got a hinge right here for the legs. So also have another uh, ball joint in there. First, and 
we also got this another cut right there so I don't know would that really help with articulation well I think her articulation is hindered because of the dress so yeah that's a little disappointing she can barely do the splits she can kick four uh, her leg can't move back though that's actually yeah uh, yeah, she can do her signature pose, but where well, she lean forward and then like just rest her arms on her swords. Yeah, she, she can do that. She can lean forward. I think we see that on the back of the box. She have that pose right there. Yeah, she can do that pose. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, oh, the hand came off. Just gonna plug this back in here. Okay, and uh, take a look at the artic rest of the articulation. The back is very inappropriate, so I'm not gonna show that. Uh, we got the uh, bicep uh, torso hinge right here, I think. Yeah, it can only lean back. You know, it can really lean forward because this whole. Uh, I guess it's her lingerie or something, or his lingerie is kind of uh, hindering the articulation. Uh, we have a ball joint here for the shoulders, you can see right there, and a hinge. So the arm can go perpendicular, which is nice. Can rotate uh, 360, like so. We have a single bend at the elbow. Unfortunately, no bicep swivel, so we have the uh, elbow swivel. And then the hinge here for the hand, like that, and uh, a peg that goes into the hand. Now, I do not like these joints. Uh, these are actually worse than the Figma joints. These are very disappointing, and so are these. <laughs> oh, man, I think Square has a, lot to, uh, a long way to go uh, for their Bring Arts line. Uh, the head is on a peg. And the ball joint that goes into the peg, so yeah. While the figure is nicely sculpted, you know, all the uh, all the parts are very nicely done. I feel like uh, you know the articulation is not so good. Uh, the penguin is pretty clean overall. Oh, I do not like this made in China square and X right there. Are you kidding me? Is this like the company that shall not be named quality? Why did they even do that? That's terrible. Like the raised letters and the main China bandages. <laughs> it's kind of smart though. Like they make, uh, yeah. But oh man. And you can see her rear section, the, uh, the paint doesn't really match the skin tone right there. If you can see that. Yeah. That's kind of. Com uh, we do have these very nice print on the legs though. So. It's not a really a redeeming factor, but since this is a gift for my wife, I don't think she really cares. She's not really into action figure collecting anyway. Uh, she just wanted this figure for the lingerie, so she can design something similar to it. <laughs> yeah, you know what, I'm going to try to convince her to uh, design a set of male lingeries that look like this. I'm sure a lot of dudes will want to wear that, right? <laughs> Uh, it will be disturbing. <laughs> okay, I think that is pretty much it for this figure. Uh, what I recommend is only to uh, people who are, you know, huge fan of uh, near the video game. I know there's also a, a newer one called Near Automata, and they also make a figure for that. So, I don't know. I think the. Uh, uh, the Bring Arts line still have a lot of room for improvement. I know Square Enix isn't really known for... They're known for uh, Play Arts, but I, I already know Play Arts have a lot of issues. So, And there's always a, no a lot of knockoffs for Play Arts figures. So, yeah. Anyway. So there we go. This is the review for the uh, Bring Arts King from uh, Near Replicant and Near Gestalt. And yeah, uh, let's go ahead and do another quick uh, size comparison. So here's Kang next to uh, 
the Mayfix Catwoman. As you can see, uh, Catwoman is a lot taller. They're both on the stand, so yeah. I think this this about the right size because uh, Catwoman is supposed to be like you know the actress is supposed to be really tall, right? So you might be able to display her next to uh, some Mayfix figures. And here's her next to a Genji from uh, Figma's Overwatch. So I think she would fit right in with your uh, Figma figures. Uh, if you're into collecting like, you know, different figures and trying to fit them together from different companies and different lines. So yeah, definitely would not go with your Marvel Legends, would not go with your uh, SH figure arts, but would go with your Mayfix and Figma. So yeah, at least that's one redeeming factor. Other than that, it's uh, it's it's just about an average figure. You know, it has a lot of room for improvement. Definitely uh, not up to the, uh, uh, you know, uh, quality of uh, various, you know, import brands such as SH Figures and uh, Figma and stuff like that. And for its price point, it's way too expensive. So, yeah, this is definitely, uh, definitely recommended only for the hardcore fans of uh, the near Replicant and near Gestalt game. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.